Hey everyone, welcome back once again to more NPy screen module uh, library learning within Python. Cool. So in the last video we were checking out forms, and uh, that was one of the three kind of crucial and essential aspects of our NPy screen applications. We see here in the documentation they talk about form objects, widget objects, and application objects. So I'm kind of going to go out of order here just because I think that's better for your learning. <laughs> kind of go on a stepping away from the book in this case, but I want to show off application objects and how we're going to better our framework now. In fact, in our code, we're going to go entirely object-oriented. And uh, that sounds pretty crazy, I know, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to save this as 03.python, and you guys might want to do the same if you guys are keeping these files as notes or something, or, I don't know, leaving comments for yourself. That's probably a pretty cool thing to do. But, uh, okay. Let's get into apps and applications. You can see these application objects, and actually the next section in the documentation, I scroll down way, way to the very bottom of the page here, it's going to take us to our application objects page. So here, I'll read through some of this and we can get a better understanding for it. NPS App Managed provides a framework to start and end your application and to manage the display of various forms that you've created in a way that could, should not create recursion death problems. Unless you have exceptionally good reasons to do otherwise, NPS App Manage is probably <laughs> pretty much certainly the best way to manage your application. Now, there is another one, the NPS App class, but unlike this one, NPS App Manage, you don't have to write your own main loop. NPS App Manage will manage the display of every single form on your application, so you just set up the objects and then call the run method, and you're good to go. So there are different, uh, of course, functions that do all these really cool stuff with, and uh, we'll get into more of those real, real soon. There is, of course, the run function, and that's what we're going to be using to actually start the program. And uh, we'll read through a lot more of this documentation as we write our code. Um, so, let's, uh, hang on, I'm trying to gather my thoughts here. Down at the very bottom of the page, it explains more of the NPS app uh, class. So that's the other option that we have when we're working with our application objects. But it says here, to use this NPS app subclass, you have to subclass it, of course, and provide your own main function definition. When you're ready to run the application, you call run, and your main loop will be executed. Now, this provides the maximum flexibility, but it's in almost every other way inferior to NPS apps managed. So don't use it for projects, and kind of regard it as an internal base class only. Okay, <laughs> so that's kind of a, a, a clear indicator to us that the developer and the documentation, everyone kind of wants us to be using this NPS apt managed class. So let's do that. We'll hop on over to our code here, and we'll kill this simple function, because we don't need it anymore, and we'll call, we'll, we'll remove our, our simple wrapper call. So here we go. Let's create a new class, because we want to subclass our NPS apt managed class. So I'll just call mine app. You can, of course, call yours whatever you'd like, and you're going to need some parentheses, because we're inheriting and subclassing NPy screens class. Now remember, we're using NPS app managed. I'm assuming NPS stands for NPy screen. <laughs> and uh, we'll just pass right now. We won't do anything with it. But let's uh, actually go down to our, our, our main call here, and I'll show you how we can get it to work. So we'll create a new object. Remember, I'm using a lowercase a for the object and a capital A for the class. So app, create the object, and it said we can run uh, dot run right down here, right? And that'll start the application's main loop. This will activate the default form, which should have given the ID of main. Uh, I don't really know what that means yet, but let's, let's see what our code will do right now. If I say app, app equals app, and then run, we create the object and we run it, we can print out object-oriented programming is the best framework, <laughs> even though it may or may not be, depending on your ideas and what you're actually writing. So, Okay, so let's call 03, run this code, and what the heck? We get an error. What's this say here? So in our file, in our uh, app.run line, bloop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop, lots, of, lots of garbage that we don't know and understand, because it's all about how the, how the library works, it tells us key error, main. Uh, what is that? Uh, of course, we just saw main in the documentation. 
last next active form equals self forms self next active form. Huh. Okay, let's take a look at that. We go back to our documentation, and uh, it tells us here we start an NPS apt manage application with the main loop. It activates the default form, which would have been given an ID of main. Okay. So, no, oh, sorry. Here, I want to show you how this works. I want to show you what we're missing out on. Now that we have our application object, we of course need the same form that we had earlier. So I'll call mine class um, NPY screen underscore form, or what do we want to call it? It doesn't really matter, but form object. <laughs> and I'm using camel case here with a capital F and capital O. So I guess not camel case, but uppercase. And we're going to inherit, of course, from the NPY screen dot form object. But we're going to subclass it now. So, we of course created an NPY screen form earlier when we called form equals NPY screen dot form, but now we're actually going to try and make it our own. We're making an object out of that predefined class for us. So there are some certain functions that come with this class, and the ones that are called by NPS managed are the ones that we want to know, because of course this app manager is what's going to manage our form. If we check out the documentation one more time, I'll scroll down a little bit more. Uh, I want to know what it does with certain forms, right? Will it tell me in here? It should. Okay. It looks like it doesn't tell me on this page, but it does in the next one for the form objects page. So that's kind of a good segue, getting actually into the new form objects page. I'm going to skip over some of this right now because I want to show you the actual method that we need to act as our constructor and actually initialize things. So form.create, this method is what's called as pretty much by the forms constructor. It default, it, by default, sorry, it does nothing and it's there for you to kind of override in your subclass, which is what we're doing right now. It's best to set up all the widgets on a form. Expect this method to be called to be full of self.add method calls. So when we're adding widgets to it. Okay, cool. So all of that jazz was just for me to say we needed to type in define the function create. Of course, it's an object, so it needs the self keyword, and uh, we'll just have it pass, right? We're not going to add any widgets just yet, but now we need to add it to our application manager or our app object. So what does it do? How do we connect the application object manager and our form object? Now, if I go back way down to the uh, previous page in the documentation, it was talking about the application objects. Um, we can, of course, add forms this way, and that's pretty much what we're going to have to do. This is the function we need to call. We need to add a form with the form class or the form ID. But since we're an object-oriented programming, what do we do that in? It's not like we can just do it willy-nilly in the class. We need a function. So, doing a little bit more reading and kind of looking around a little bit more at the, the documentation. Okay, here we go. Additional services offered by NPS apt manage. These are usefully overridden by subclassing the class. By default, they do nothing. The one that I want to look at here is NPS apt manage dot on start. This is the function that you override to perform any initialization. Pretty much, this is where you set up your forms. So that's what we're going to do. Define, oh, I've got caps lock on, on start. Notice that O is lowercase and S is capitalized. We'll say the self keyword because this is an object. And for our self, for our object, we want to run that function we saw earlier, add form. Cool. Now, what do we pass in as arguments? Head back over to our documentation, check it out. ID. ID, what is that? ID should be a string that uniquely identifies the form. Well, is that... Is that our object name? It's not like we're creating the object. We haven't created... All, we, all we've done was created an app object. So here's where I'm getting at 
that error that we saw earlier. Key error, or main, is what we need to pass in there. A string as referring to the main form, or the main screen that we're actually looking at. You'll notice, run, what we're actually calling at the bottom of our code here, to get the main loop to begin, it starts a manage application in the main loop, and a method will, de will activate the default form, which should be have been given an ID of main. So hey, that's exactly what we pass in here. Pass in main as the ID, and it needs to know what form is this. So we'll say form object, and any of the arguments that you pass in after this are arguments that will be passed to the object or the form object's constructor. So we'll give it the name here. We'll say NPy screen form. Now when I run this, let's see what happens. Run the code. Hey, cool. NPy screen form. It's being displayed for us. It's pretty nifty. I'll hit enter to uh, I'll hit enter to get out of the program but it doesn't get out of the program. Why is that? What's it doing? Come on, come on program, right. Okay, <laughs> you have to use control C to break out of this right now, and I'm using this again as another segue to transition to the next tutorial where we talk about the next active form. And uh, that's what we can use to uh, kind of leap from this concept to the next concept. So. Thank you for sticking with me, guys. I know this was probably a little bit of a longer one, and you kind of had to bear with some of the stupid stuff that I did. But hopefully you guys understand. Now we've got our object-oriented programming framework with our application object and, of course, our form object. Yeah, of course, we haven't gotten any widgets yet, and this is pretty much useless so far, but we're still learning. It's That's part of the, the meat and potatoes of all this stuff. All right. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.